Whether it's in the air, on land, the sea, or under it, the SimNet is your simulation network. What do the following aircraft have in common? Here we see an F-4E Phantom, which is the Air Force variant uh, in the Nellis range. And here an F-5E with the refueling probe, which was a uh, standard export option. An F-86 Sabre uh, performing some trials, low level delivery. An AH-1 Huey Cobra with the co-pilot gunner there with the very interesting sighting system. An F-15 Strike Eagle, the E variant, uh, specifically the backseater there, the Wizzo. And of course the venerable UH-1 Huey. So here's an F-4G, Operation Desert Storm firing anti-radiation missiles at, uh, at targets. So what do all of these aircraft have in common? I'm a big fan of this aircraft right here, the F-4 Phantom, and what it has in common with all of those other aircraft and helicopters mentioned, as well as many more, is actually this, the grip. This is a B-8 or MC-2 grip, and it can be found from everything from the P-80 Shooting Star through to the F-86 Sabre, the Thunder Jet, the F-105, even early variants of the A-10 and F-15 used this grip on top of their stick. So this is a ubiquitous, historic, and much loved flight control for aircraft from the Cold War and beyond. This particular model I've been working on for the past year or so. Uh, I 3D modeled it in Blender based off of a laser scan of a real B8 grip from a T38 Talon. It is accurate to about the millimeter. I'm very confident about that. I've held the real one in my hands as well. Features a dual stage trigger, three buttons, and a trim hat. I'm also working on multiple other versions. So this one is from an F4 Phantom. I'm also working on versions from an F5 Tiger. This one is distinguished by the handrest, which was usually shaved down on the F4. I've also experimented with several different coatings. This is something that is up to the user at the end of the day if they want to spray their grips. The real thing was usually made out of resin and painted or coated with a, with a type of rubber. Uh, I personally have enjoyed using Plasti Dip, although there are other options. So today we're talking about the assembly for the F4 grip, but uh, Going forward in the future, there will also be these kind of uh, Cobra style grips with the dual header, uh, as well as the F5 style grip, which includes the three position uh, or three way hat on the thumb. This one is great because it is ambidextrous and actually came as a request from one of the testers. Uh, they said, hey, wouldn't this be great as, a, as an ambidextrous grip? So all of these files uh, of course, are going to be made available. Starting with the F4 grip, uh, again, based on the B8 that was used in the F4 Phantom, at least early variants of the F4 Phantom. Uh, and here I'm showing uh, a coated and glossed uh, grip here as well. And the great thing is these grips are 3D printed. You can get the parts off of Amazon or a special order. And the best part is that it's free. I'm releasing the files for this grip for free. They're going to be available on Thingiverse and Cults. And 
you can download it and build it today. I'll include a bill of materials uh, in the Thingiverse link. And if you want to get started and get this on your printer right now, you can do that. Now, I can already hear some of you in the comments saying, hey, Simnet, if I were going to do this, why not just go ahead and buy a Verpol Warbird grip instead? And to that, I would say, hey, if you're looking for a AAA product, if you are looking for something of extremely high build quality, durability, and absolutely outstanding customer support, then look no further. Uh, because as a happy Verpal customer myself, uh, I'd actually say that uh, they're the ones that launched me on this journey uh, with their with their incredible uh, with their incredible products and support. Um, I think they did a great job by making all of their grips compatible with Thrustmaster bases, and I was inspired by that. And uh, this grip in particular is is a, a great representation. It has all of the key features that you would be looking for in a B8 style grip meaning it's got the dual stage trigger. It's actually got an eight way hat, which is excellent, provides you with multiple inputs. Uh, and then a four way hat on the thumb as well, which includes a push and then two buttons there and an LED, which I believe is programmable. Uh, finally, I, I, if you have a Verpal base and you're looking forward to flying aircraft either in DCS or War Thunder or Microsoft Flight Sim or, or whatever it is, uh, and you want this style grip, uh, then by all means, this is uh, this is a great way to go. So why did I go ahead and spend a year working on a similar grip? Well, the reason is because this particular grip, although it looks similar to a B8 or an MC2, uh, it's actually a replica of an Mi8 helicopter cyclic uh, from from one of these. And the reason we know that is because a user who actually owns um, an MI8 cyclic grip compared it and uh, the resemblance is obvious. This is, uh, this is modeled off of the MI8 grip. And I find it funny because the MI8 or MI24 cyclic grip kind of looks like what somebody would make if they had only ever seen a picture of an actual B8 grip. Uh, and so that's that's what's been modeled here. Obviously, there are some differences. For example, the hand rest uh, comes out a little farther and it is in the B8 style. Uh, there's also a pinky button, which is not present on the MI8 cyclic. So for that reason, this isn't a pure MI8 cyclic. Uh, it's quite close to it, but it's closer to an MI8 cyclic than it is to a B8 or MC2. So if that matters to you, then and you are interested in building one of these yourself, uh, by all means, keep watching. Um, if you, however, are a purist, or if you want to uh, hold a piece of history in your hand or a replica that is closer to the American grip than to the Russian uh, or Soviet style MI8 grip, uh, then by all means, uh, watch on and let's get into it. Alrighty, we are assembling the F4 Phantom style B8 grip today. So first things first, we're going to grab the printed shell. Uh, so this is what it's going to look like once it comes off the 3D printer. Uh, print settings are up to you and, and dialed into your particular uh, printer. I have a Voxel Lab Ares, uh, so I find that the point Two layer height uh, with a 15 or 20 percent fill is sufficient doesn't use too much filament uh, we've got some button openings here I kind of designed a universal faceplate that will allow you to swap out 
the buttons if you find that you like a more tactile feel or something with a little bit more travel. Um, for the trim hat, I actually use an Alps switch, which I'll include in the bill of material. Uh, and the brains of the operation are actually a 4021 shift register. That's what both the Thrustmaster and Verpal bases read. Uh, so it will show up as either a custom or Thrustmaster Warthog or F-18 style grip. Now, you can wire the 4021 shift registers individually, but it's way easier to use a shift register board. And Devalestis over in the DCS forums uh, actually did the legwork here and uh, uh, made this uh, uh, shift register board available, which is excellent. And that's that's awesome because that really opens the door to creating many custom grips, uh, it, really to your heart's desire. Uh, and when I saw that in the DCS forums, that that was something else that kicked off this project. I said, hey, you know, anybody can just go online and order this, uh, so why not design uh, a grip around it? Um, in fact, they had converted an old uh, uh, X-Wing fighter type grip or a Top Gun grip. This is the wiring diagram uh, and the pinout for the five pin mini DIN. Um, again, we'll go over this in a little bit more detail in a PCB uh, soldering video, but for the purposes of assembly here, uh, just remove the supports and uh, I'd like to clean up uh, any remaining bits that are hanging off and it's pretty straightforward. Here we have the inserts uh, and uh, the knurled bit. Again, that's what screws on to the actual Verpal or Thrustmaster base itself. I uh, like to make sure that those are nice and flush. Um, then we have some brass inserts. Now I've used M2 brass inserts and M2 screws. Uh, so I set the soldering iron to the lowest setting and then press those into the plastic and then allow it to cool. And when it's done, it should look something like this here. Uh, and what this does is it just makes it stronger uh, in a year, I've never had one rip or break after, even after continuous uh, uh, pulling on the stick there, no pun intended. Um, so that piece slots in there, and then that piece goes on top uh, in that orientation, and uh, you can line those holes up and screw those in with the M2 screws, which again are included in the, in the bill of materials. Um, and then that notch uh, allows you to line it up with the base of the grip uh, and insert. Uh, it doesn't require any adhesive, although if you are building this and you just want to absolutely ensure that there isn't even the slightest bit of wiggle or anything along those lines, uh, you can put either a dab of hot glue or CA glue or something along those lines in that little notch, um, and that should help. And then the M3 bolts and nut holes are there as well uh, and those are inserted uh, at the end. In terms of buttons, I have gone through many, many buttons and I appreciate uh, the family in my life that I've uh, asked to push buttons for, for the better part of uh, the last 12 months. Uh, here there's a tacked button, so that's, that's available in the files, although I personally really like these uh, P1 style buttons, which have a few millimeters of travel. Uh, compared to the real thing, they're not as heavy, but they're about as close as you can get while still remaining tactile and having travel. Um, so these screw into the face plates themselves, which then screw into the grip. Uh, to make them metallic, I've just used a used a paint on everything style pen uh, with, a, with a silver metallic there. Um, if you have a real P1 button, it will actually fit as well into the grip. I've, I've left a face plate that, uh, uh, that would allow you to insert a real P1 button if you have unlimited money. Uh, so this screws into the bottom and then uh, you can screw the nut into the top as well. And then finally, uh, the button just presses on top nice and snug. 
uh, and that then gets placed into uh, the grip itself uh, there and uh, it takes an M2 screw uh, as well. You can include, uh, you can press in a threaded insert into the hole in the grip uh, at that point as well, uh, but that's that's entirely entirely up to you. Now, again, I haven't done any soldering or, or wiring in this video. That will be either a separate video or, or a set of instructions, a PDF, something like that. Um, I really like these DuPont connectors, which I've soldered to all of the buttons and uh, the female on the PCB as well. Uh, reason being, again, for different uses or different types of gameplay, um, you know, if you're if you're an MLG Pro gamer and you like to rapidly, rapidly click these buttons, maybe you've assigned it to some sort of fun function within the sim where it requires very rapid pressing, you might want a tact switch. Um, and so I've uh, created this kind of hot swap so you can swap these, these buttons out. Um, the thumb button also especially uh, is hot swappable because um, I intend to swap that out for either a three-way, four-way, five-way, or even eight-way with push uh, type of hat in the future. And the board allows for that flexibility as long as I solder in the uh, uh, female DuPont uh, connectors in advance and as long as there are enough available ports. Now, this piece here is just a little cosmetic item. I've noticed that there's a screw on the real B8 grips. Um, I, I assume it's some sort of tensioner or something along those lines, but for the purposes of our grip, uh, it is just cosmetic and so entirely optional. That's a little, uh, uh, M3 screw and nut there as well. And then we have, uh, I believe it's either an M4 or an M5 uh, screw as well. And that goes through and it actually does serve a purpose. Uh, it It is the tensioner for the trigger mechanism or if not tensioner, it kind of keeps the, the trigger housing in place. Uh, so if you're pulling back on the trigger all the way, it doesn't swing back farther into the grip. Um, and what that also allows you to do is you can untension that to allow uh, the trigger to uh, recess a little bit farther into the housing as well. So um, this I'll tighten up now, but in a few moments when I insert the trigger uh, mechanism, I will loosen it. Uh, it kind of locks it in place and makes sure that it doesn't wiggle. But also if you want, to, uh, if you can't reach the end of the trigger, for example, and you want to untension that, that's also possible. The trigger is a two-stage trigger. It uses tacked switches. Uh, it feels good. It's not as, uh, it's not as heavy as the real thing. The real thing is incredibly heavy. Uh, I'd say that this is comparable to something like a Thrustmaster Warthog or uh, a Verpal Grip. Um, it's certainly heavier than something like uh, NX-52, uh, for example. So you can also increase the amount of tension by making uh, buying springs that have a thicker coil. Uh, that will also give a heavier uh, uh, heavier trigger pull. Um, so I've gone with sort of medium springs. Again, uh, unlike the real thing, you know, you're likely going to be pulling this trigger all the time. And so you want something that is uh, certainly heavier than some commercial grips that I've held or, or enthusiast or, um, or store-bought, I'll call them grips uh, that I've held in the past. Uh, and yet... Uh, uh, still light enough that they can be used for prolonged periods of time without causing any cramping or anything along those lines. So the tack switches, I remove two of the prongs and then insert. Uh, and uh, usually at this point, I just uh, grab it with the edge of the tongs and give it a, a quick tap to set it in place. Um, again, adhesive is optional here. I actually don't really recommend it because the springs kind of keep the buttons under tension. Um, 
and you'll see that there is a little window in the back uh, through which you can feed the wires and the male DuPont connectors so that everything can be soldered together. Uh, the springs fit into the recesses in the trigger itself, and it's a bit of a scoop motion here. Uh, so I get the bottom one first and then the top one, and then lift the, uh, the little lip of the trigger up and into the housing. And this is a sort of a replica of an auto trigger or the real dual action trigger. Um, however, it's again, not nearly as heavy of a trigger pull as the real, uh, as the real thing. And this is just an example of a semi-completed PCB there with the DuPont connectors, so showing that the holes in the bottom are, are large enough to uh, fit the, the male ends. So again, here we are uh, untensioning that, uh, that screw, making sure that everything is flush. Uh, I just use a piece of filament, although you can use a screw. Uh, the filament works great because you can kind of uh, feed the filament through and then snip it at both ends. Uh, I'm having some trouble grabbing that there. Okay. This feeds through a second set of holes. And again, this holds the trigger in place. So the filament holds the trigger in place, but the screw just kind of ensures that uh, even if that filament bends over time, that everything, everything stays put. Um, you could also use a uh, two millimeter copper wire for this, or uh, even a steel rod or, or whatever, whatever suits your fancy. Um, now for the trim hat. Uh, I have this as a separate button again for that hot for hot swap purposes. Um, uh, in this case, we are using an Alps four-way with push. Although uh, in the future, I will also have a design that has an Alps eight-way with push uh, because I know that's, uh, uh, that's very common on grips nowadays and, and uh, folks might want the extra flexibility of having a few uh, extra uh, inputs. Uh, so that just snaps into place. There is a little nub which you might need to sand down um, depending on the tolerances. Uh, uh, printers can sometimes, small sections like that can can come out a little bit thicker than anticipated because of the flexing, because of the heat of the, the print job. So that Alps four-way with push slots nicely into the hex uh, pattern there. And then it's kept in place once again with another piece of filament, although uh, you can really use whatever uh, you like. I find that the filament works quite well. Um, it doesn't flex over time, uh, although, you know, you could use a piece of filament and a bit of adhesive. Um, I don't, but it's definitely an option if you do find that it, uh, uh, that it uh, swells or, or decreases in size over time. That hat there is press fit. Again, you can put a little dab of glue in there if you just want to ensure that it doesn't uh, pop off. This is a pre-wired ALP switch there, which I've uh, assembled. Um, so again, that, that uh, for example, feeds into uh, a ground and then the rest of the inputs as well. Just showing that there. And of course, the PCB itself and all of the wires uh, fit inside the body of the grip. Uh, although I do recommend placing the PCB and the wires once completed inside the grip before assembling. Um, that just helps with uh, ensuring that you can line up the DuPont connectors. For the trim hat itself, in order to get the white arrows on the trim hat. Um, I paint in the white first uh, into the recesses of the 3D print, wait for it to dry, and then paint over the excess white using a black. Uh, you could use acrylic paint, um, really uh, whatever applicator you like, but white paint and uh, black paint should, should generally do the trick. Uh, this, for example, is a uh, nose up, nose down, left wing down, left right wing down uh, 
uh, version of the trim hat that I'm working on as well. Again, the idea here being that it's hot swappable because there are a few different versions of the B8 or MC2. Uh, for example, the back seat of the F15E Strike Eagle uses a MC2 grip, which has writing on the trim hat. It says, you know, left wing down, right wing down, nose up, nose down. Uh, but in the F4, there is no writing. It's just the arrows. Uh, so I've painted those in, going to wait for that to dry. Again, that's the four-way hat with push. Now, again, once the PCB is in there, again, connected with all of the DuPont connectors as well, uh, that should fit. Not too snug. In this case, it's, uh, it is a little snug, but that's just, uh, uh, that can be twisted to ensure that it has the correct orientation when you're plugging it into your, into your base. Uh, but that lines up with the register inside the grip itself. There we go. And that screws on to, uh, uh screws on to your, your base, whether it be again, the Thrustmaster or Verbal. The final step is to place uh, the M3 nuts in the marked location. Uh, in this case, I, I don't do it in this video because I'm actually waiting for my uh, full four centimeter M3 nuts to come in, uh, but you would just screw them in in that location there. Uh, and that feeds through the insert to ensure that the grip stays put uh, once it's on the base. And that, in essence, is the assembly process. Again, we'll go over the soldering of the PCB in a later video. Uh, that process is pretty straightforward, even for a complete beginner such as myself. It, it really wasn't uh, too complicated. I grabbed a simple soldering iron and solder set from uh, Amazon or AliExpress or, or what have you. And uh, it uh, does the trick. And again, all of these parts as well are available from uh, various vendors, including Mauser, DigiKey, you name it, and they'll all be included in the bill materials. So there you have it, folks. That's the assembly for the B8 slash MC2, or as I like to call it, Century Series Grip. There will be more grips in the future as well. Again, uh, the F5 grip is also in progress, that design. Uh, that includes the hand rest and the three-way switch on the thumb. But the great thing is that something like this, once you 3D print it, as long as you follow the DuPont connector method or method of your choosing, you can always swap out that thumb button to give more functionality in the future. Uh, I experimented at one point with having eight weight switches on every single button on this grip, uh, which was hilarious, impractical, uh, and very, very fun. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the SimNet with the Century Series Grip Assembly Guide. Over the course of the past year while working on this project, I ended up ordering enough parts for about 20 of these grips. In order to cover the cost of developing this project, I'm likely going to sell a small batch of these, so if you're someone who wants to get your hands on one, but does not want to build one, feel free to email me. My email will be in the description. If there's enough interest, I may put the remainder up on an Etsy or other online storefront. I don't intend to go into this full time, but I figured this was the best way to cover the cost of the project, as opposed to charging for the 3D models and STLs themselves. So much of what I have learned with this project came from people providing their knowledge freely on the internet, so I wanted to join in that DIY spirit and share my love for Century Series Aircraft with you all. Thank you so much for watching, stay tuned for more DIY and sim content from me in 2023, and Happy New Year!